What's the worst Sonic game? Not any smooth brand individual would jump out and yell, Sonic 06, it's, it's Sonic and the Secret Rings, or it's, it's gotta be Sonic Forces, right? And I guess I don't blame them. These are the mean games that YouTube critic number 133477 go to when referencing dark patches in the series history, but when you look past the dozen or so mean Sonic titles out there, you'll begin to be met with a lot more games to look at for a new contender. I believe the reason for this is mostly, well, like I said, they're not mainline games. They don't really have top priority from Sega, and we already know how the top priority games end up. They may not do it now much, but there was a point in time, mainly from 2001 to 2014, where Sega felt the need to slap Sonic onto everything. Java phones, electronic game consoles for babies, anything that could run something that someone could deem a video game, you could bet your bottom dollar that Sega were going to make something Sonic related for it. And because of all these different projects going on at once, many for systems that nobody really gives a shit about, it caused quality control to get a little... non-existent. I mean, who cares if it's bad? Surely not Sega, by the time you've gotten home and plopped that thing into your system only to realize it's a huge pile of crap, your hard-earned money has already been wired to Takashi Azuka's new swimming pool fund. Most recently, Sega have said they're gonna make more of an effort to focus on quality over quantity. This is of course after the last time they apologized for making bad games and promised more quality titles. Guess what game released soon after? But either way, I think I trust him this time. At the very least, Sonic Frontiers is looking to be more ambitious in scope compared to the last few entries. One thing I'll give Sonic 06 is that it takes longer than an afternoon to sit through. Like, sure, Sonic 06, Secret Rings, Forces, Boomerize Alyric are all bad games, that's what I question, but you can at least look at them and find something to appreciate. With Sonic 06, I could endlessly praise its soundtrack and attempt at taking Sonic into a new age with an unbelievably ambitious story and gameplay concepts, despite feeling at it. With Secret Rings, I love the setting it places Sonic in, it's so unique for the series, just compared to the normal green hills or power plant, and the creative way of working around its low budget with the storybook cutscenes. Sonic Boom boasting the best animated cutscenes in the entire series, and Sonic Forces... You know, it's polished, I'll give it that much. But I'm talking about the bottom of the barrel. The lowest of the low. The Sonic games out there that are just so unbelievably flawed, so impressively bad, that they can barely even function. Are there any out there like that? <laughs> what do you think? This video wouldn't exist otherwise. So here we have it. I'm gonna take a look at some of the perhaps lesser known Sonic games to try and discover which of them is definitively the worst. But first... My good friend Ellis Mark recently recommended me this amazing men's grooming product brand called Manscaped.com, who have sent me this massive package filled with many amazing men's grooming products. This video is sponsored by Manscaped.com. Manscaped offers the best tools and liquid formulations for your body. They hooked me up with this all-in-one performance package 4.0. Check it out, it's got the Lawnmower 4.0 body trimmer. With waterproof trimmers and advanced skin safe technology, they even sent me this wireless nose and ear hair trimmer, deodorant, and look, for a limited time you can get all this plus two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag and Boxer Briefs. So go to Manscaped.com today and get 20% plus free international shipping plus two free gifts when you use promo code SP check out. And thank you, Manscaped.com, for sponsoring this video. Now, our first game begins with a little-known company you may be aware of, called... Nintendo. Stay with me here. Now, Nintendo came out with this game called Donkey Kong Country in 1994. It was a massive hit, selling 9.3 million copies, and undoubtedly a huge factor in its success was its unique presentation, boasting these schnazzy 3D-looking pre-rendered graphics, using 3D models for the sprites used in the games. This blew people away at the time, despite how dated it seems now, but for the time it's clear this is what gamers were wanting to see more of. That funny story. Well, less funny and more depressing. But did you know that the people behind this fancy silicon graphics technology originally pitched it to SEGA? Yeah, they talked about it quite a bit in the Console Wars documentary, which I'd recommend checking out, but according to employees from the time, apparently SEGA of America were very much on board with using the tech, and wanted some involvement in making games using it. However, when the proposition was brought up to the good people at SEGA of Japan, they immediately turned it down, not thinking it was a good idea. Again, 9.3 million copies. Good old Sega Japan. We can always count on you to make some of the dumbest decisions possible that would forever tarnish the Sega brand. Anyways, I guess realizing the potential in these kinds of pre-rendered games, Sega eventually started to try and imitate the success of Donkey Kong Country, with one of those endeavors being the 1996 Sega Game Gear release, Sonic Blast. Why they thought they would try and replicate these kinds of graphics on a handheld system is beyond me, but by god, they sure got it working and the end result was Sonic Blast, a game that barely anybody ever talks about, therefore more concerned with shitting on the console counterpart, Sonic 3D Blast. 
I find it funny how confused Sega were at this point in time, how what Sonic 3D Blast even was. I remember in the old trailers to Sonic Extreme of all things, they acted like 3D Blast and Blast were a Mega Drive and Game Gear port of that, but like, I think it's pretty obvious these three games have almost nothing in common. I mean, one of them didn't even come out. Well, two actually, because they also advertised a potential Sega Pico port of all things. Whereas we all know, the only Sonic games on the Sega Pico were Sonic Game World on the underrated classic that defined a generation, Teals on the Music Maker. Anyways, I refrain from talking about the actual game for long enough. It's bad. Sonic Blast is a 2D platformer where you can play as either Sonic or Knuckles. Knuckles has his usual glide, but funnily enough, I think this is actually the first game where we see Sonic having a double jump with his base arsenal. I guess they put that there to help you traverse around this game's horrid platforming. Let's face the biggest issue first, and it's obviously this game's art style ends up hindering the gameplay by a ton. I already have some issues with Donkey Kong Country, on how with its pre-rendered graphics, it can be a little hard to tell what you can and can't stand on at times, but here it's increased tenfold because Sonic is so fucking giant on the screen he takes up way too much room. The controls are extremely sluggish. Sonic's transition to running feels so awkward and unnatural, which definitely isn't helped by the animation. Look, look, look at his max speed. This is how you're going to portray Sonic's iconic run. Looks like he's trying to hold in his shit and get to the bathroom on time. Funnily enough, in the game's code, there exists an unused animation of Sonic doing the peel out, but like, wh why not just use that instead of this one? <laughs> Sonic just doesn't look like he fits in this world. The platforms and terrain are tiny, but his hitbox is just as small to compensate, so it makes even doing the simple task of obtaining rings at shore just fucking get it! And the level design is either piss easy or incredibly infuriating. This game has an especially bad water stage. And speaking of especially bad, these special stages look atrocious. I thought 3D Blast won the award for the most unappealing special stages in Sonic history with its bridge, but these ones take the cake. Honestly, the only redeeming factor about this game is some of the boss designs. Like this one for Yellow Desert, being a reference to a character from Journey to the West. That's neat. Oddly enough, the game in Japan is known as G-Sonic, God only knows what that stands for, and there exists an extremely rare Master System port of the game that was exclusive to Brazil. The Master System was very, very popular over there, still being re-released there to this day for some fucking reason. They do have normal systems over there. But Sonic's Game Gear endeavors oftentimes find themselves being better on the Master System, due to the wider screen, which helped with difficulty a lot, especially with Sonic 2. So I'd be interested in knowing if the Master System port is that vast of an improvement over the Game Gear release. Sonic had a lot of good games on the Game Gear, such as the original Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic Chaos, and Triple Trouble, but Sonic Blast is certainly not one of them. Sonic Spinball? Sure, it's not the best, but it's certainly not one of the worst Sonic games. Why is it on here? Well, you may have missed out on it, but I'm actually talking about the Game Gear version of Sonic Spinball. And why is it on here? It's hard. It's really, really hard. The controls just barely work, dude. You're dealing with the already unwieldy spinball version of Sonic, but instead of being on the more powerful Genesis, where at the very least you get a wider view of where you're going, you're playing it on a screen the size of an iPhone. Five. See, at least in the Mega Drive version of Spinball, they had the foresight to slow Sonic down a bit. You know, he really isn't that fast in the grand scheme of things, and it's because they knew that you were going to need fast reaction times already to try and get to where you needed to be. But on the Game Gear, Sonic's speed is constantly fluctuating, especially while simply rolling down a slope, Sonic can go at a crawl, then immediately speed up, then start slowing down again. They made a physics-based pinball platformer where the physics barely work. If anybody ever tells you a game can't be bad just because it's hard, I implore you to sit them down and make them play the Game Gear version of Sonic Spinball. I've never passed the first level. Similarly enough, here we have the rare and obscure Sonic Ann, released on the Engage in 2003. What was advertised as this revolutionary hybrid of a handheld game console and mobile phone. <laughs> Playing games on a phone. What fucking loser would want to do that? What a bad idea. Anyways, if you're looking at the footage right now and are thinking it looks familiar, then you'd be right to say so. Good eyes on you, sir. Here's a gold star. Sonic N is nothing more than a port of the Game Boy Advance release, Sonic Advance. Wow, Mark. I didn't realize you were part of the anti-Sonic Advance squad. What did it ever do to you? Slow your roll, amigo. This game isn't bad because it's Sonic Advance. It's bad because I can barely see the fucking thing. Being a phone in the early 2000s, the screen of the end gauge was very vertical, meaning that it's just Sonic Advance with half the screen chopped off, making it an extremely hard challenge to be able to tell what's coming up ahead of you. I mean, even they clearly thought this, by including the option to play it at a normal 4x3 aspect ratio with top and bottom borders, but at that point, why aren't you just playing the GBA version like a normal human being? Sonic N really isn't the worst thing in the world, but I think the fact that this dumb idea got through production to the point of actually being released is enough to at least mention it on the list. 
Wait, Sonic X got an official video game that wasn't some crappy Flash nonsense? What the fuck, I haven't heard about this, that sounds awesome! That it does, my fellow fanboy. But alas, Sonic X was released on the Leapster, and is a BB game for BBs. I have no idea why they went with a BB game based on Sonic X of all things. Sure, the show was wildly popular with kids, but it had some dark shit in it too. Come on. I was more of a V-Smile guy myself, so I had no experience with this one as a kid, but I just find it weird that this thing exists. It's a weird hodgepodge of Sonic assets, like a fucking modified Sonic 3 sprite that gives them green eyes to match the modern design. But all it's used for is a game in which you get locked off into certain small areas and have to complete simple math problems by grabbing numbers in the right order. Fun. I mean, hey, you can collect rings too. They don't do anything, but you can still do it. Fun. There are even three minigames you get to play. Aerial Automations, Math Robot Roundup, and Eggman's Super Sucky Machine. Fun? Sonic X gets a 0 out of 10. Sonic Edge Soft would've been better. I ain't no infant. I need a game that's more challenging for the gamers of today. This, uh... This isn't the type of challenge I meant. We all know the story behind Sonic Genesis. What was meant to be a simple port of the original Sonic the Hedgehog on Game Boy Advance to celebrate the 15th anniversary of the series, ended up being one of the most unpolished buggy Sonic games of all time. First of all, the screen crunch here is atrocious. You can barely see what's coming up ahead of you, which is already a problem present with some of the levels in the Mega Drive version. This makes it especially hard in stages like Labyrinth Zone and Scrap Reenact 3 that have those spinning spike balls. But beyond that, the frame rate is also awful. This thing chugs along so much you'd think your Game Boy was gonna explode while playing, it's struggling so much. This ends up fucking up a lot of the timing with jumps and shit, making certain parts borderline impossible. To be fair though, we do have the bonus anniversary mode, which is actually being brought back in the newly announced Sonic Origins. So just what extras do we have for that? You can spin dash. Yay. Simply looking at the footage of this one is enough to see why it's bad. How does a company fuck up so badly at porting one of the most popular games ever? Hell, even Java phones had better ports of Sonic 1, and that one uses the Sonic Advance logo for the rings. But again, it is a port of an already existing game, so can you really say it's the worst Sonic game out there, or simply the worst Sonic port? That's up for you to decide, but funnily enough, some absolute chat out there decided that they were going to take it upon themselves to also port the original Sonic to the GBA, to see if it was possible for it to be done good and prove that Sega are just generally incompetent, which, you know, they've done a fine enough job at proving themselves over the years. But they did it, and it's a one-to-one -one port of Sonic 1 in the Game Boy Advance. Despite the screen crunch, this is just as good as the original Sonic. Wow, what a great job. Who made this thing? Oh, okay, one of the main guys who went on to make Sonic Mania. That makes sense. Sonic Chronicles was so elusive to me as a kid. I'd always see it in magazines and wonder what the fuck it was. So I finally decided to ask for it for my birthday one year, and... I played it for 15 minutes, got confused, and never touched it for years. I'm pretty sure this was my first exposure to an RPG. I actually decided a few years later to try and play through it again, and ended up beating the whole thing and enjoyed it quite a bit. But I don't know how, because each time I've tried to pick it up after then has been a completely miserable experience. Sonic Chronicles was made by Bioware a company known for making some pretty good RPGs, so naturally everyone thought Sonic's first starting into the genre would be in good hands. That is until they dropped it out of their hands and into the B-teams and rushed out this piece of shit. Honestly, I think this game's weakest aspect is the presentation. Like sure, as RPGs go, it isn't anything special, but considering I have very little experience with the genre, basically only ever completing the two South Park games, I couldn't immediately tell of anything inherently awful about the gameplay of Chronicles. It's not fun, but I can imagine there are much worse. But where this game really fucks up, in my opinion, is in its god-awful presentation. This game opens up with this cheap-looking flash animation explaining the game's intro, which is originally much cooler and animated with frame-by-frame, frame, before being scrapped for unknown reasons, probably for looking kinda goofy and off-model at times, like a, a brush of teeth through. But beyond the intro, the way it looks is just ugly. The world maps have this charming, hand-drawn style, but over top it are these bizarre character models where the characters are just... And I'm sure we all know about the infamous music by now. Some of the tracks actually aren't that bad, I think the battle themes are definitely the highlights, but some of them are just unlistenable. Like everybody remembers this classic remix of Big Arms theme from Sonic 3. Or 
diamond dust zone. The best thing about this game that I can think of are some of the funny character interactions you can have with some of the characters. Like, you can make Sonic an absolute prick in this if you wanted to. It serves no purpose, but I kind of think that's funnier, that you can choose to make Sonic an asshole for literally no reason. Sonic Chronicles definitely isn't the worst Sonic game out there, but it's a mess for sure. I was gonna put Sonic Unleashed on Java phones here because it's fucking Sonic Unleashed on a phone, but after checking it out, this game doesn't actually seem that bad. Like a lesser Sonic Rush. Huh. I don't know if I'm in the minority here, but as a kid, the Xbox Connect blew me away. I didn't see the motion tracking issues or the lack of interest in gameplay. All I saw was that I could move my arm and see the video game copy me, and that was enough to sell me. What sold me even further? There's a fucking Sonic the Hedgehog game for the thing. I played Sonic Free Riders all the goddamn time when I was young, barely registering that I was basically tricked by Sonic into exercising for 10 hours a day. But when I went back to play it recently and after going online and hearing other people's thoughts on it, yeah, this game's terrible. Sonic Riders 1 was pretty good. Zero Gravity was a step down, but still alright. Free Riders. Free Riders barely functions. And it's all due to Sega's poor development for the Xbox Connect. See, a lot of Kinect games have alright motion tracking, but in Free Riders, it's next to unplayable. Even traversing the menus in this thing is a chore, without struggles to track your movements. As a kid, I vividly remember spending minutes on end trying to simply play a stage, but for some reason, the thought never appeared in my head. Oh, maybe this game is just bad. This game also has way worse cutscenes compared to the other two. They were fully animated and they looked pretty expressive at times, despite Sonic's weird model. But in this one, we just have generic PNGs moving around. Oh boy, what a trade-off. It's no wonder that this game killed the series. Although I would like to see him tackle it again someday. I like the Sonic Racing Trilogy. Transformed is my favorite kart racer of all time. But there's still something unique and more Sonic-y about the Riders franchise. And I hope to see it done again. At the very least, just bring back fucking Team Babylon. That's all I want to see. But yeah, no, Free Riders is an awful game. Really, really awful. So with all that being said, what's the worst Sonic game? Well, that's kind of a hard question to answer. I think all the games I talked about today are the worst in their own special way. Whether it be presentation-wise, in terms of gameplay, or just by being a stupid idea that should have never existed. But I think still, we can all agree. It's SonicJamonTheGames.com. What the fuck is this? <laughs>